So viewers have asked, uh, GMOF uh, 5 wants to know, will Marlardo be confiscated? And then Linda Joe asks, what about all of Donald Trump's other properties, the golf clubs, will he lose them? Will he lose some of them? And then finally, wasn't Pence just waiting for Trump to fall so he could become president? Well, that's what it's going to be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. Thank goodness for the viewer questions. Jima, you're right on it. Will his properties be confiscated? Trump Tower? That looks like it's in danger. Wasn't there some stuff going on with the Scotland uh, property? I mean, it's out of the country, so it may not be touchable. But uh, yeah, so will mar a <laughs> I love that, mar a uh, be confiscated? Uh, so we'll ask that question. And then uh, Linda Joe, all of the other properties, okay? All of the other places that he, he owns, uh, what's going to happen to those? Um, will he lose some of them? Will he lose everything? And then finally, Mike Pence. I mean, he was holier than thou. He felt like, I've been put here for a purpose. And then he pre pretended that purpose was at the end, which was to actually do his job and just read uh, the results of the uh, election. But um, did he think that's why he was so patient? He could put up with anything if maybe they got rid of him and he would become president. He wouldn't do anything to make him uh, be gotten rid of, no. But if he was gone, Trump was ready to step right in. I mean, Pence was ready to step right in. So here we go. We're going to jump right into it. So GMA5 asks, will Marlardo, Marlago be confiscated? Fair question. I mean, I alluded to it in uh, one of my previous readings recently, thinking, um, you know, you know, it'd make a great uh, park uh, for regular people to go to. So... Um, Let's do just three cards on that. Will Mar-a-Lago be confiscated? I mean, I think that's a fair question. But of course, before we do anything, let's have just a moment of meditation. Will mar -a -Lago be confiscated? Thank you, GMA5. Loyal viewer, and I really appreciate that. Helping my little channel uh, come along slowly but surely. So, so will mar -a -Lago be confiscated? Will mar -a -Lago be confiscated? And I don't mean will a bank repossess it. I want to know if the government... Is going to have something to do with it uh, being the federal government. Will the federal government have something to do with mar lago being confiscated? Three cards. Okay. One. Two. And three. Will the federal government, will it be, uh, will it be confiscated as a result of some action of the federal government? First card. Justice. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, it almost speaks for itself. Second card up for will mar -a lago be confiscated because of the federal government. Here we've got long-term plans, the Three of Wands. And uh, if you look at this, you really have to look into the card carefully. You can see the Three of Wands right here, very fruitful. This um, person here is kind of looking off into the distance, the ship's coming in. So it's a, a long-term plan that's being laid here. And you can see that there's a, uh, a figure here uh, laid down, very seductive female figure. Uh, you've got the fruitfulness of the, the 
it looks like actually the coat of this fellow is made of butterflies, which is, of course, a rebirth. So will Mar-a-Lago be confiscated? Long-term plans. Wow. And then the uh, final card for that, look at this, the death card. The end of a cycle and the beginning of something else. My goodness. If you just put these in order, <coughs> like this, it tells a story. There will be justice. Okay. You can see the justice card. She's beautiful and she's very casual about her victory. There will be the end of a cycle, a complete end of a cycle. I'm about to cough. Let's have a drink. And then long-term plans, a rebirth. Interesting. And he's actually looking out over an ocean. Mar is ocean. Mar-a-Lago, ocean to lake. So there we go. Thank you, Gma. Pretty good. <coughs> Let's put these back. Linda Joe. Thank you, Linda Joe. You're saying, coincidentally, as it turns out, what about his other properties? The golf clubs, will he lose some of them? Um, will he lose all of them? So the golf clubs, the other properties, I mean, he's got a ton of properties and they're all mortgaged. Some of the ways those could be lost, as a matter of fact, is um, they're all mortgaged to the hilt, apparently. And, um, and his uh, method of uh, doing business, which is very valid, by the way, when you're a healthy business, is to keep refinancing those loans when they come due because they're all, you know, he can't get just a normal loan on, on properties like that. They're loans that have a due date at whatever kind of interest rate he's, you know, agrees to, which would be, you know, tremendous because he just needs to keep these things pushed off into the future, just like everything else. He deals with his business and his properties and his finance just the way he's dealing with these lawsuits. Push it off into the future. Refinance this again. You know, I'll be able to refinance it again when that comes due. So will he lose his properties or will he just lose some of them? Let's do three cards, but maybe uh, we'll turn that into a six card diet at cross. So will Donald Trump lose his properties or will he lose some of them? Let's do uh, three cards right away. One, two, Three. Yep, he could lose them by not being able to refinance them anymore. He's confiscated by government. He could have to sell them to pay people off. Who knows? So the first card for uh, of a possible diet at cross, but maybe this will answer it. Will he lose his properties? Okay, so what do we got here? This is, ah, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is being very embattled. That's what the nine of wands in is being very embattled. And we can see here, we've got someone who's kind of lost in the woods, trying to find his way out past all these issues. And someone is already uh, laying down and almost uh, skeleton-like um, in front of all that, uh, that action, those plans. So will he lose? And you know what? This is a lot of, a lot of, ag I, we are asking, will he lose all of them? Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine properties here. Interesting. Next card. Will he lose all of them? Will he lose some of them? Okay, here we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A very interesting card for this because the seven of coins is typically depicted in the Rider Waite deck as someone looking at a bush with some coins growing it like fruit. He's got kind of one harvested and wondering, have I done enough? There's a more I should do. Should I take more of these? Should I leave some of these back? Wondering if you've done enough. Looking at your value. Looking at your value because these, these are actions. These are plans. And this is looking at your value and wondering, did I do enough? Should I do some more? So this could be, you know, the Trump um, uh, side uh, wondering if they've done enough to protect themselves. And the final card for that uh, then is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this card, the Seven of Cups, remember cups are emotions and uh, heartfelt situations. And the Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion. Each one of these cups has a different option that someone might go by. One of them is even empty, and uh, it seems to be the one up in the sky. So, um, so yeah, will he lose all of his properties? 
these are all high number cards and I'm thinking perhaps he would, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in the order they would be in if I was doing a dyadic cross. Why? Because I'm gonna do three more cards and make this a dyadic cross. So the uh, signifier card of this is will he lose all of his properties? And we've got, uh, was it nine, one, or 10? 10, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you got the nine of wands being embattled, lots of issues, challenged by, did I do enough with my value to hold on to it? And underscored by, look, let's lose use all the illusion and delusion that's worked for us all these years so far. Let's use that now. That would be his, his playbook, wouldn't it? Three more cards. Will he lose some of them? Maybe they'll tell us in this, or maybe this will back up the rest of that. Well, the past of this is the Page of Cups. The Page is the very weakest of the court cards, and he brings a little cup of compassion with a surprise in it. Okay, remember this is usually a fish in the Rider Waite deck popping out of that cup. So this page, look, he's presenting himself. He's saying, look, I have this. I can offer this. And uh, so, but that's any compassion, whatever little there was, is in the past. Okay. Maybe there's one surprise too many. Um, the In the sky of this reading, for will it be some of them or all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six. Remembering how things were. Again, this is an emotional card. This is the babes looking at their cups full of uh, compassion and emotion and wishing things were the way they were in the past. And that's in the sky. All he wants is for things to be the way they were before he started all this presidential stuff. As far as the companies are concerned. So there we go. And then uh, the final outcome with this dyadic cross, for it will be all of them or will it be some of them, is this two of cups. This, for me, this is uh, trying to balance those emotions. And for me, this uh, right here with this uh, caduceus reminds us that there may even be an oath taken. So there may be some deal struck where just they find the right balance or maybe just two things are left, his home and maybe that stupid uh, Bedminster uh, Cemetery <laughs> that was a golf course that he buried uh, his ex-wife in. So uh, Linda Joe asks, uh, will he lose all of his properties or some of, some of them? We start out with the three cards and turn it into a dyadic cross because it started out with ten, uh, nine of wands really being bat embattled, uh, challenged by wondering had I done enough with my value to keep things going, underscored by illusion and delusion, you know, just very uh, heartfelt, emotional situations. In the past, we had a page of cups, a little bit of compassion, but that's in the past and that's gone. And then in the sky, we had this six of cups, which is really just wanting things to be the way they were. And then it finally ends up with this two of cups, these emotions trying to balance, maybe even an oath is taken to just leave them a place to live. So, Linda Joe, thanks. Now the last question is mine, as a matter of fact. And I wanna know, wasn't Pence just waiting for somebody to nail Trump, for Trump to go too far, for the impeachments to take, for something to happen where he would just slide right into that presidential seat. Gosh, I wonder who he would have made his uh, vice president if he went that far to think about that. If Pence had something in mind, who would I make my vice president? Pence thinking. Interesting, huh? So I think we're going to do this. Um, we'll start out with a dyadic cross and see if it's interesting. It could go to a full Celtic cross. Probably not, I'm going to think. So Pence, Pence, Pence. Weren't you just waiting for Trump to fall so you could slide right into that position? Six cards. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Six card for Pence. Were you just waiting for Trump to take that final misstep? Are you just as shocked as the rest of us that nothing he did um, ended him? Signifier card. Pence. Well, the Emperor, the signifier card for wondering if he would be able to step in and take a uh, charge is in fact the Emperor. That's the position that we're talking about. He wanted to be the big kahuna, Pence did, and that's what we're talking about. This whole 
uh, layout will be about this position. What was the challenge to, to that? Well, ah, the Imperatrice. Very interesting. So the Empress is the, uh, so th these cards are almost perfectly in tandem together. The Empress is just slightly less um, effective than the Emperor, but at the very top of the chain. This is Pence, and this is the Trump position. This is the presidency. This is being the emperor. And then the, the challenge to that is that Pence would never be more than number two. That was the challenge. He would never, ever be more than number two. It was just in the cards, so to speak. The base of this thing then is uh, this Knight of Swords, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And you get a big close-up look at this uh, knight because he's riding in in a cup of compassion somehow. Very interesting to have this truth, justice, rules, and law kind of tempered by this very emotional uh, teapot that he's almost in, this very emotional vessel. So the Knight of Swords is the fighter for those things, and that's the base of this reading, but it's just in an emotional soup almost. You know how hard it is to fight a fight when it's the emotion that you can't get past just to deal with the truth, the justice, the rules of the law, which is what this knight's carrying. But look what he's, he's traveling in, all that emotion. In the past of this reading, with the Page of Wands, again, a small offer of wands are action plans, forward movements, and this is in the past. So in the past of this, um, where the Pence uh, was just waiting to, to get in there and, and, and anything more the cards can tell us about it, this page was just a small idea. Okay, just a small movement, a very weak offering. He's all dressed up and ready to go, but he's a page, and it's even in the past. So the sky this reading for uh, whether, I don't know if that could happen for Pence, and the cards have repeated, which I like very much, is the Two of Cups finding a balance. It could be some oath-taking uh, going in here. So the hot, you know, the, the, the aim for this little endeavor was finding the right balance so that you could take that oath. That's what was being aimed for. Yep. Very interesting. And then the final outcome for weren't you just waiting for your chance, uh, Mikey, is, and look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is an absolute, um, theft and betrayal, okay? This is truth, justice, rules, and law being carried off by theft and betrayal with just a couple little uh, points left behind. Look at that. So one more card to see if it just ends, because this is all point, this is the perfect picture of what we're talking about. The emperor is the position we're talking about. Pence would never be more than number two, the empress. Uh, it's underscored with this knight of swords, Truth, justice, rules, and law, but he's, he's mired in these emotions. In the past, with this page of, of wands, it was just a small, it was an idea, it was a, you know just a small idea, and it's in the past. And in the sky of this, with this two of cups, was just finding that right balance to, to finally take that oath. And then the final outcome for that, with this seven of swords, betrayal. Let's get one more card to see if it definitely uh, says something definitive about uh, if that's what he was doing, in fact. And it comes up with, yep, short-term plans. Two of Wands plans, uh, and the Two of Wands is just having a short-term plan. I just want to. That's. I just want that job. I'm not thinking beyond that. I just want that job. Yeah, I think um, it's pretty clear. That's what it was. Well, that's the three reads today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tell me to know what you think in the comments, and let me know what you want me to read about because I'll read about that. So. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so I got these great cards. And if you ever doubted that I'm a sucker for a great packaging of cards, then this will confirm it. So these cards are by famed artist Salvador Dali. He includes himself in uh, the cards and his wife. And they also include uh, examples of some of his artwork and other uh, artists uh, that uh, he felt were appropriate for the, for the interpretation. Uh, these cards were created... Uh, or were um, commissioned in 1973 for the uh, film uh, Live and Let Die. However, uh, Dolly's um, uh, price was, was, I guess, too much. So contract uh, negotiations broke down. And then finally, 10 years later, by 1984, Dolly completed the tarot deck, 78 cards, and had them published for the first time, limited edition. And now Tostin has re... Um, 
uh, printed these cards in this amazing uh, box. So when I ordered them, I thought I'd get a box, you know, about this big. And when this thing came in the mail, I was totally shocked. They're not cheap. They're quite expensive. But anyway, so this is an amazing cover. This box is like a, a crushed velvet uh, kind of finish here. And it's just everything, everything, everything that gets me going about tarot card uh, containers, if you can't tell from my excitement. So, and then there's lots on the back here. It's in three different languages. It's in uh, Spanish, in German, and in English. And then the way this thing opens up, it's just like this. And once you get inside, you've got this amazing booklet uh, to describe uh, how uh, something about the cards and how to use them. The booklet is a full color, and then each page has three interpretations of the cards. When I say interpretations, I mean that's English, uh, German, and Spanish. So, um, lovely, lovely book, amazing. I mean, the price of the cards was, was the, the price that I paid for this was worth it if I only got this book. The one uh, problem I have with it, however, is that it's beautiful, but the first part of this uh, book is uh, a lot that talks about uh, Dolly and how the cards came to be. And as you can see, it's on this dark purple with this gold printing, and I can barely barely make it out. I'm going to have to use my magnifying glass eventually to read it, but uh, not today. And uh, so I've had these for a few days and I've been uh, practicing with them. I haven't tried to decipher this yet. It's just too dark and I've got uh, vision problems that make it just even more complicated. But when you finally get to where they're talking about the cards themselves, it's fantastic because you've got a white background, easy to read. It's a little small, but still it's easy to read because they've, they've got everything on one page. And uh, amazing, amazing, amazing um, I'm so glad I got this. It was all well. Now the cards, look at how they're displayed. The cards themselves come in this really cool gold foil kind of, it's a typical box for tarot cards, but just the design is terrific. And then the cards themselves, I'll take them out here, put the box back, and well, I'll keep this out. And then I'll put this away. But I'll show you the cards quickly um, before we go any further. And I guess I'll have to leave this here so we have something to, to, to look at. And then uh, here, when you get into the inner sanctum, there's no more uh, instructions inside here. It's just this cool uh, foiled uh, box. And then the cards themselves are terrific. The back is a really beautiful uh, foil-looking design. It's not foil, but it's a gold design. And this just simply says Dolly over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. That's the back of the cards. The cards themselves are amazing. So, like I say, they have included some of uh, uh, snippets of Dolly's work and some other artists. And if I was more studious, I would have really studied that and have something to tell you uh, more concrete. But um, they're just absolutely beautiful. On the Magician, you can see uh, Salvador Dali is the face of the Magician. If I find it quickly, I'll show it to you. And on the uh, Empress, that's his wife, uh, Gala, but, uh, which I don't see right away. But um, they're terrific cards. I can't wait to use them. And so there's where we're at. You know, I, I make these uh, this mess of the cards like this uh, so that uh, you can get a chance to see different cards more completely than just the few uh, cards that a, a, a reader might pull up in, the, in a reading and, um, and enjoy that. And then like I always say, if you're working with someone, I always think it's a good idea to have them spread the cards out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. And then you know um, that they've got a, a stake in the, in the reading. So Salvador Dali, amazing, worth every penny I paid for these. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come, so ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.